the EdXL P3 chapter review six, just going through a couple of these questions. Um, I'm working off the working from the solution bank. Um, this, these are the differentiation questions. Uh, sometimes I find that my students uh, find the solution bank quite useful, but at other times they find it limited or something's missing. Or So I thought I'd just make some videos to have full worked answers. Okay, so we're given this function and they say that X has to be positive and uh, real. So larger than zero and real. Um, find the set of values of X, for which F of X is an increasing function. So for increasing function, the gradient or the F dash of X must be larger than zero. For an increasing function, f dash of x larger than or including zero. Okay, so we first, of course, have to get f dash of x. Uh, looking at this, we have a lin, and we have just some usual stuff. So let's first unpack the lin. So if we have a lin x, some sort of y value, then our uh, first derivative will be um, dy dx. Our first derivative will be a over x. Uh, of course, if x is a whole function, then you'd have to, in this case, it'd be times by one, you times by the first derivative of what's inside the bracket. Okay. So if we have this, uh, that solves the 12 lin x. So our Let's call it f dash of x. Just call it whatever they call it in the question. So f dash of x equals 12, which is our a value, over x on its own. And then this obviously should be quite familiar. So 3 over 2 times x and 3 over 2 minus 1 is a half, x to the power of a half. Okay. So this is our first derivative. And you, you could write this power of a half as square root x as well, if you like. Uh, I'm just going to leave it as power of a half for now. So if I write this in another way, they've asked us to find where this is larger than and equal to 0. OK. We had that x is always positive, so x is larger than zero. Uh, if you put in positive values for x here, this will never be negative. This will never be, never be negative. So all x's are our options. So all x's, all x's, that, all positive x's are options. Okay. So the final answer is just to write there that our function f is positive. Uh, excuse me, is increasing for all x as long as x is positive, okay, which is what we were given. Number B says find the point of inflection. So for points of inflection, um, our second derivative our second derivative is equal to zero. Okay, that's how we know. Second derivative equal to zero. So let's grab our first derivative off the from the previous question. So it was 12 over x uh, plus three over, that's a three, three over two x half a half. I'll leave it like this. You could put a square root, but I'll leave it like this. So we want to derive that again. So f dash dash of x. Um, I'm going to change this 12 over x to x to the power of minus 1 just to make it easier. Same thing. So minus 1 times 12 is negative 12. x minus 1 minus 1 is minus 2. Plus a half times 3 over 2 is 3 over 4. And a half minus a half 
is a half minus one, sorry, is minus a half. Okay. So we have, this is our f dash dash of x. And if I were to write this in another way, I'll just put a little colon here. We want where this is equal to zero, where this is equal to zero. So a little bit of simplification. Where is this equal to zero? Simplify it. Um, so I'm gonna take the negative 12 to one side, or just try and keep it in the same order. So it, if they're either both at negative or both positive. So we could say 12 over x squared, that x, x minus two is positive in the denominator is equal to three over four x a half. Okay, just putting it all positive. Um, just bearing in mind that we might need to use that x to a half is the square root. I'm gonna cross multiply, so three, uh, three times four, oh, let's just do it like this, 12 times four root x equals three x squared. Just deviating slightly from, from the mark scheme over here. Um, we want to 12 times four, 12 times four, why is my mind blanking? Why is my mind blanking? 48, 48, divide both sides by three. Okay, so this is an interesting situation. We have a 16 root x equals to x squared. Um, we want x's just on one side. So I'm going to divide both sides by root x. So I get 16 and this is a half. I, I don't, yeah, this, if this was a half, just another way of writing it, it would end up being x2 minus a half, which is, um, well, let's, let's just follow that all the way through. Two is also four over two minus one over two. So it'll be three over two. Okay, x three over two is equal to 16. And the way to get rid of that three over two, um, or one way to do it is to raise both sides to two over three. That would make this a one. Three times two is six over six, which is just one. So x is equal to 16 to the power of two over three. Another way to write that is the cube root of 16 squared cube root of 16 squared. So X is the cube root 16 squared is 256. I did use the calculator for that. If you could do it in your head, well done. Okay, this is our X and to get our corresponding Y for the point of infle inflection, you need to sub in this into your original equation. And the original equation was F of X Oh, we had, just to write it, so it would be 12 lin, and you put your value for x here. So this was, oh, no, that was, that was the first derivative. Let me just make sure that I'm giving you the correct information. No, that is correct. Okay. And according to the mark scheme, when they sub this in for x, we get a point of inflection with the corresponding y of 32 lin 2 plus 16. Okay, so here's our point of inflection. You should do the full working, full working there. That concludes question number 5b.